certified industrial engineer, an assayed engineer, a certified Kaizen facilitator, a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, and a certified design master. He has been conferred with an honorary doctoral degree by the Asian Seminary Leadership and University of Oklahoma. He has a total of nine years working experience in the fields of academics, logistics, supply chain manufacturing, training, and consulting for SMEs up to multinational corporations. He also published an international book entitled Introduction to Statistical Process Control, a Problem-Solving Process Approach, and a contributing author for i6sigma.com, the world's leading Six Sigma online resource. He leads international initiatives to the Philippines as chairman of the International Association of Innovation Professionals and national president or country manager of for Association of Manufacturing Excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to Dr. Dr. Felix C. Veroya. Hello. Good morning, Bo. Pasensya na po kayo, mahihain po ako sa personal. Ayan. So thank you for the kind introduction. Um, good morning. Ayan. Parang wala na kayong energy. Nanonood ba kayo ng Dragon Ball Z? Sino nanonood ng Dragon Ball Z? Ay, kukonti. Kukonti kayo dito dito? Lahat mas ahead ng konti o mas bata ng konti? So kung nanonood kayo ng Dragon Ball, kailangan ko ng tulong. Ubus na ubus yung energy ko. So pwede bang ano, itas niyo yung dalawang kamay niyo? Ayan. Alam niyo ba yung spirit ball? So di ba sa Dragon Ball kasi you're sending the energy to Goku. So kunwari ako si Goku, so yan. Kailangan ko na energy. Ayan. Nararamdaman ko na po pumapasok na sa katawan ko. Ang init na. Ang init dito. May, may aircon ba dito? Ayan. Thank you, thank you. So again, my name is Felix and I was asked by the by Miss Juby. No, um, yun pala, isingit ko na I would like to congratulate the wonderful team of LSQP and the officers also of QPAP and the distinguished guests, my co-speakers for this morning. So maraming salamat sa pag-invite at sa pag-base ng event na to. So my name is Felix and today I was asked to discuss about design sprint no? or how will you innovate no, your processes, your products and services in today's Industry 4.0. So alam niyo naman na nasa Industry 4.0 na tayo, no? So more of cyber physical, data na yung bagong oil, sabi nila. So nandito tayo sa age na to. And this morning, if you will allow me, I will share with you paano ba nangyayari yung innovation using design screen. Okay lang ba yun? Yes. Gutom na to. <laughs> so binabalance ko yung makikinig kayo at hindi nyo ako makikita sa pagkain. Okay? So uh, just to share with you, last May, I completed the program. This is a month-long program under the Design Spring School at Brazil. Pero hindi po ako nagpunta ng Brazil. Ako po ay online learner kasi. So that's my profile. So I, I completed all the requirements for being one of the few, I don't know for the Philippines, pero global, few certified sprint master by that specific organization. So everything that you will he hear from me is basically coming from that particular body of knowledge. Okay. So kanina, maganda yung opener ni, ano, ni Mr. Gorospe, the keynote speaker. Now, gagayahin ko sana. Pwede pang tumingin kayo dun sa kanan nyo? Kanan nyo? Yeah. O, huwag nyo, huwag nyo siyang i-judge, please. Tingnan nyo lang po muna. Tapos sa kaliwa din. Sa kaliwa din. Ayan. O, sa likod na rin. Baka maingit nyo na sa likod nyo. Ayan. Sa so, tingin nyo ba, yung taong nakita nyo, may problema ba sila? Yes. Because every one of us, merong problema. At sino bang ba gusto at sino bang ba gustong may problema siya na hindi na so-solve? Di ba wala naman? You want every of your problems get solved. Now I want to show you some pictures. So this picture, kung may nakakakilala sa inyo, she's engineer Aisa Miheno. She's the, the engineer who invented the salt lamp. Okay? Um, siya yung umupo in between Jack Ma and Barack Obama when they visited Philippines. So siya yung inventor nun. Next, this is a picture of Propital. May nakakaalam po sa inyo ng Propital. This is a crowd crowdfunding na platform. It helps farmers para maku, makakuha sila ng pondo coming from different investors. And then yung pondo, ibibigay dun sa farmers para gamitin sa pagtatanim. Para hindi na sila mangutang. Parang gano'n. 
So this is started by actually students, knowledge students coming from UP. What else? Sino po sa inyo ang nakasakay ng angkas or Grab or Uber? Yan. So this is what? It resolve yung ating difficulty, yung ating problem in terms of transportation, yung ease of transportation. Now, let me ask you, what is common among these three examples? Pwede bang bumawas dun sa t-shirt? Ayan, may dala po kasi yung t-shirt pero pang raffle. Pero pwede po bang mamigay yung t-shirt? Kasi wala akong jacket, hindi naman kasi civil yung mga lalang ko. So, t-shirt lang yung kaya kong ibigay. So, sino? Any wild guest? Any educated guest? Para hindi masyado wild. Educated na lang. Any educated guest? Yung doon kasi sa kanila yung shirt? Wala? Walang gustong mag-try? Yes, sir? They're local? They're innovative? Naku, dalawa, dalawa yung t-shirt. Pwede mo pang-share na lang kayo sa shirt? Pwede mo lang po. So tama yung sinabi ng mga gentlemen dito sa online. They're, they're local and they're innovative. In short, they solve problems. They solve problems that normal people like us, they experience natin. And that's that's the beauty of Design Spring. No? Ito yung kagandahan ng Design Spring. Ginagamit natin siya to solve human problems. No? In the age of puro machine, puro data, and all. Now just to pay tribute, Yung design sprint kasi is a derivative. Ibig sabihin po, galing siya sa isang original body of knowledge na kinuha natin. So, puntahan muna natin saan siya nang galing. So, it, it came from design thinking. No? Siguro yung iba sa inyo, familiar na. No? Design thinking is actually an approach na ideation process. It is used to what? Generate ideas. Okay? It's used to generate ideas which is what? Human-centered yung pinagagalingan ng mga problema. And this is iterative, meaning paulit-ulit po. At yung such time, makuha natin yung optimal na solution na pwede ilagay dun sa problem na identify natin. Now, just like any other approaches, it follows a five-phase process. No? So kung alam niyo yung PDCA, alam niyo yung DMAIC, kagaya rin po nun, meron din tayong approach. So it starts with emphasize and then followed by define, ideate, prototype, and test. So, yun po yung phases na ginagamit ng design thinking. Now, hindi po tayo magpo-focus dyan. We're just paying tribute. Kasi baka sabihin naman ng mga karinig na iba, ay teka lang, derivative kasi siya. So, dapat banggitin natin saan siya galing. Ngayon, ito na. Ito na yung ating topic for this morning. Design sprint. Okay lang na-share ko sa inyo? Yes. Yan. Sige, design sprint. So, design sprint, actually may book po na nabibili. So, ito po yan. Hindi po kami bibenta ng book, pero ito po yung ginagamit ng aming reference nung nag-aral kami for yung one month. So, Design Sprint is a five-phase process that aims to answer critical business questions. So, paano? Kagaya ng design thinking through design, prototyping, and testing with actual customers. Yan. So, ganun yung process. Now, sasabihin ng iba sa atin sa room, posibleng ito, alam nyo na, as a thought process, well, that's good. But, para dun sa iba, you can actually integrate this on the programs that you are doing sa quality and productivity. And the latter part of this session, I will share with you at least three examples of paano ba. Okay? Now, let's start with the model muna. The framework, the approach. So, kagaya ng original na design thinking, siya po ay five phases then. It starts with understand, followed by sketch, then decide, prototype, and then validate. No? So, ito po actually ay nag-originate sa Google. So, kayo naman ay user ng kahit anong Google product, no? Google Drive, Gmail, yan, siguro at least. So, yung process na to, ito yung pinagdaanan kung paano nabuo yung mga products ng Google na, na gagamit natin ngayon. So, makikita nyo dito, merong diamond. No? On the second, on the middle part, meron tayong tinatawag na divergent tsaka convergent thinking. So, on the process of us applying design sprint, yun po yung gagamitin natin mode of thinking. So we have coming from one idea, papadamihin natin, that's divergent. And then from many ideas, pipili tayo ng isa, that's convergent. So yun yung madadaanan natin. Okay? Let's start with the first phase. Ano nga yung first phase? Understand. Understand. Okay. Malumanay. Gutom na talaga ito. Okay. Understand. So anong ginagawa sa understand? Sa understand, no? We are trying to figure out ano ba yung problema. Okay, again, 
I would like to remind you that we are talking about the problem in reference to the human, the human side of it. Now, what are we trying to solve? That's the first question that we should ask ourselves. Para natin malalaman, ano ba yung kailangang isolve? Now, we use tools, right? Ano ba yung ating sinosolve? Pain points. Wala naman siguro nandito sa room isang quality or productivity practitioner na ayaw matanggal yung pain points ng customer nila. Diba? Now, I'm, I'm speaking for customers, not only customers outside our organization, but customers inside our organization. Remember, the next process to your process is your customer. Tama? Ayaw mo naman pasakitin palagi ang ulo niya. So, ayan. Kala ko nagpas ko na ng Christmas lights. So, what you want to do is to address the pain points. Di ba? Pain points ang in-address natin. But first, we have to identify what are those pain points. We have to understand saan nagagaling yung mga pain points ng ating customers. So, what we do is we map. So, a very specific tool from Design Thinking Design Sprint is what we call the user journey. Kung nakagamit na po kayo ng process map, huwag kayong magulat, kagaya lang po yun ng process map. Ang kaibahan lang, dun sa process, we're trying to figure out saan nga nagkakamera ng problema. When we say problema, it's a condition, di ba, na hindi na-meet based dun sa requirements. Either it be pangit yung experience niya dun sa paggamit ng product or service, or dun sa business process na dinesign niyo. So, yun yung hinahanap natin. That's one tool. Also, we can do user research. No? User research in terms of what is your particular market. What is the particular segment? Anong age group? Anong gender? Okay? So that is part of your pre-work para maitindihan mo kung ano yung problema, ano yung pain point. Next, you also do user interviews. Ito yung pinaka-common na ginagawa natin. We interview people who uses the product, who uses the service, who is using our business processes. Then, pwede natin tanungin after that, are we trying to solve the right problem? So, hindi muna tayo aalis dun sa phase na unless we decided that we are um, concrete enough, clear enough sa atin kung ano yung kailangan nating isolve. Now, another tool, so, na, nakuha na natin, di ba? Pwedeng madami kasi yung problema na yan, di ba? So, ang kailangan natin establish is what we call the how might we or HMW. Everybody say, how might we? How, how might we? It's, it's a new way to reframe your you need to frame your problem. Instead of parang, di ba, syempre ako naman po, ay linsig sigma practitioner din, I understand you that we, we all have our ways on how to create the problem segment. But, but for this one, it's a more creative approach, no? parang reframing the problem using how might we. Let's say for example, how might we increase the engagement of our customers or how might we increase the participation of our employees to our improvement programs. So, ganun natin siya pinaframe. So, kailangan before tayo mag-exit sa understand phase, meron tayong isang how might we. Okay? Sabi nga ng, ng kaibigan natin na si Charles Kettering, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. So, I've seen so many projects kahit hindi design sprint na parang they're trying to, yes, they're trying to address the problem pero it's not the right problem or the problem is not clearly stated kaya nagpapaulit-ulit sila dun sa process. Yan. So, that's Understand phase. Next, sketch out options. Sino po dito ang mahilig mag-drawing? Si Sir Ray. Parang si Sir Ray lang yung tumataas yung kamay. Si Sir Ray, mahilig siyang mag-drawing. Bakit ba tinatanong natin dito yun? Kasi sketch phase, from the phase itself, kailangan natin mag-sketch out. Now, we sketch out options. Kasi we identified what? A problem. We already have our how might we. Alam na natin yun, no? Now, using the divergent thinking mode, ibig sabihin, coming from one, how might we, we're trying to figure out options. Diba? Sabi nga sa pelikula, options, options, options. So, we're trying to figure out options that will address yung how might we. And how will we do that? Sketching. Now, sabi sa mga related literature, yun daw pong sketching improves creativity. Diba? Whenever you have an idea, no, merong mga tao, no, nagsusulat sila inside, I mean, nagdodraw sila, nagdoodle sila inside of magsulat lang ng text. Kasi, nafi-figure out na nila, nafi-visualize na nila kung ano yung gusto nilang mangyari. 
So similarly, Google believes on that. Kaya yung second phase is more of sketching options. Remember, we want to generate solutions that will address the pain point, that will address the gap kung bakit tayo may design sprint. Have you heard this one, Crazy 8? Um, para may magkakaibigan kayo, walo kayo, yan, Crazy 8. Naku, hindi ko mulit yung joke ko. Hindi. <laughs> Okay, so yung phase 8, it's a tool used in design sprint under sketch phase kung saan 8 ideas in 8 minutes. Kaya niyo ba yun? 8 ideas in 8 minutes. So imagine, if you're trying to use the design sprint and you're trying to figure out alternative solutions to your problem, to your HMW, so kung may 10 ka, member, no, nagpo-facilitate ka for 10, 10 member group, Imagine after 8 minutes, kung lahat na comply nila, you have what? 80 ideas. So, ganun kabilis. No? So, syempre, ang ideas daw po kasi ay lumalabas under time pressure. No? So, nangyayari ba yan? Siguro, Google, they can do it kasi they, they're used to the, the process. But whenever I run design sprints, hindi adamihan ko naman ng konti yung time. Para naman, mga mamaya, magka-nervous breakdown na yung mga attendees kasi sobrang pressure nung ano. And dapat medyo unique yung solution from one another. Hindi pwedeng magkakapareho. So, this is an example I, I took from the internet. So, ang ginagawa nila is they want to improve yung donation screen. So, imagine, simple lang po yan. Papel lang yan na hinaki sa walo. At yung walo mong solution, nandyan po. Okay. Para lang mag-make sense, pasensya na po kayo, ako po ay bata at heart. So kung nagpo-Pokemon ka dati, kung kailanan mo itong, itong character nito, si Eevee, meron siyang walong possible na um, evolve, pag-evolve no, na form. So parang ganun din. Ito yung HMW, yung nasa gitna, and yung nakapalibot sa kanyang ibang character, yun yung mga potential or alternative solutions mo. So that's how we do it. Yeah. So what's important, kasi yung iba, nahihiya sila, pangit yung kanilang drawing. No? Hindi naman mahalaga na pagandahan ito ng drawing. Ang tinatest natin dito is, are you able to convey your solution no, to the members of the group? So yan. Ang mahalaga is you, you are able to convey your idea. So that's sketch. No? So sa sketch, we use what? Anong mode of thinking ngayon? From one to many? Divergent thinking. Tama. Next phase, third phase. So marami ka ng options ngayon. Next is you have to decide, alin ba yung susundin ko? Okay? Now, coming from options, 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 we're trying to figure out the solution that we want to pursue. So this is by the use of convergent thinking. So I know for a fact na kayo, yung mga tao sa room na to, lahat tayo naka-experience na ng, ng method or ng tool, technique na ginagamit to choose. No? So ito nga, new flavor, kasi more, more of creative side ito, hindi ito technical side. So ano yun? So we have the sticky decision. So parang ano lang siya, heat map booking or sticky decision. Yung mga sticky notes na bilog-bilog na maraming kulay. So imagine, uh, kunwari itong table na to, lahat sila meron tigwawalo na solution. And then what we will do is we will post those solutions across the room. And during the design phase, iikot yung mga members nung 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 group and then they will figure out alin ba dito talaga yung magsa-address ng ating gap na na-identify during understand phase. So magbobotohan. So kung hindi kayo masyado uh, familiar, siguro naman nanonood po kayo ng PDB o yung medyo siguro ibang tao, awala ah, din. Uh, siguro sa amin ng TV na labas yun. <laughs> so PDB, di ba parang doon nagbobotohan kung sino yung lalabas, yung may pinakamaraming votes, siya yung lalabas ng bahay ni Kuya. So, ganun din po. Yung may pinakamaraming boto, siya yung magpo-proceed dun sa next phase. Dun sa fourth phase natin. Now, there are other tools, like for example, this one, it's called the decision matrix. Pwede katulog na ginagamit yung tool ngayon. Pero dito, tinitingnan natin, on the y-axis, we have the technical difficulty. Gano'n kahirap gawin yung solution? No. And then, dun sa baba, dun sa x-axis, we have the user value. So what we want to, to, to search for is, or our solutions, nandun sa upper, dun sa low, uh, sorry, lower right. Tama? Sa lower right side. Kung saan, madali siyang gawin, pero mataas yung, ay sorry, upper right nga. Yung user value. Yung mabibigay na value or solution dun sa ating identify na gap or pain point. 
So kanina nagbotohan tayo, meron kasi tayong pampambrick ng ating ng funare. Ayaw nyo naman na magbotohan. Na may nakita kayo dun sa isang paper na pinost, maganda yung solution. This other one, maganda yung solution. So what you can do, it's either you will go for rumble, so bits and pieces of the solution na binigay ng mga members ng team pag sasamasamahin dun sa final solution, or you will stick dun sa nanalo, dun sa botohan, using all, all in one. So pwede nyo siyang i-mix. So again, ang reminder lang when you do this particular phase is you have to pursue, di ba, yung solution that will address the user's pain. Meron kasi tayong tendency no as problem solver or hindi ko naman nila lahat po, no. Parang may mga practitioner ako nakausap, nakita na parang meron namang better way on how to address it pero because of yung sakit na complacency, no, parang ito madali kasi ito eh. Ito na lang gawin natin. So iwasan natin 'yon. Tingnan natin kung alin yung magbibigay ng value dun sa ating customer. Yeah. So that's for phase number three. So recap lang tayo. Ano nga yung first phase? Understand. Understand. Second phase? Sketch. Sketch. Third phase? Decide. Decide. So now, ibig sabihin, may napili na kayo. You already chose kung alin yung itutuloy nyo dun sa fourth phase, which is what we call prototype. Yeah. So yung mga engineers sa room, excited sa prototyping phase. No? Pero baka magulat kayo, hindi ito yung prototype na kinakakala nyo. So prototype, so ano ba yung prototype? Gumagawa tayo ng, ng isang working working element na pwede natin ipasok dun sa process na i-improve natin or i-innovate natin para yun yung mag-work as prototype. No, parang sinasimulate natin paano siya gagalaw dun sa actual na environment. So yung prototyping sa design sprint, it comes in many forms. So one form is medyo naputo lang, low fidelity prototyping. So nakita nyo, para siyang gadget pero hindi siya electronic. Box lang siya. Okay? Pwede rin tayong magandang ng 3D. No? Napaka, napaka um, increasing na ngayon, trending na ngayon yung use ng 3D prototype. No? Even even mga manufacturing process, no? may, may specific na 3D printer that we can buy pagpunta doon sa manufacturing plants natin na pwede mag-manufacture ng 3D, 3D parts. Yan. Medyo costly nga lang. Pero ito, So, example ko ng mga 3D printed na mga prototypes or products. Pwede rin mock-up. No? Kapag may tinutulungan po ako na mag-run ng design sprint, hindi kami bumibili ng software na pang simulate nung halimbawa, we're, we're doing an app or website. Ang tinuturo ko lang sa kanila ay PowerPoint. Kasi parang gusto mo lang naman makita pa paano mag-interact again yung customer, no? for example, yung user, dun sa ginagawa mong prototype. So, pwede po yun. Hindi naman, hindi naman kailangan bumili ka agad ng software na mamahalin para lang gawin yun. So, you can do itong ganito, PowerPoint mockups. Dito kasi yung remote. So, I have here, ay, may video pala ako. Meron bang sounds dun sa ano? That we can connect. So yung example na to, it's an example of an actual low fidelity prototype na ginagamit. So tingnan nyo po, walang electronic, kahit up yung ginagawa nila, no, or software, wala, walang electronic dyan na nangyayari. Yung screen, di ba? pinipindot lang ng user, so yung user po yung pumipindot. Siya yung tinetest nyo kung, kung paano siya mag-interact. Sige, okay lang po, may ano mo na lang. I, sa subtitle ko na lang. Ayan. And then magka-type. Ayan. So, ganyan nangyayari yung prototyping. Walang, walang electronic. Hindi nga sila gumamit ng PowerPoint. So, nakikita nila paano naging interact yung actual na user. Actually, we're crossing two phases now eh. Yung user dun sa prototype na ginawa ninyo. Ayan. O, diba? Hmm. So, ayan. Yan, galing lang po yan sa, ano, sa, face, sa, sa YouTube. Okay, so on this particular phase, prototype uh, phase, kailangan, di ba, sa atin kasi may mga taong perfectionist. But I think it will not work for this phase. So, what, what we want to do is to have yung continuous improvement rather than delayed perfection. Minsan, we're trying to perfect something kunwari isang process that we want to our, that, our, that we want our users to use pero parang napakalate na laki na ng damage kasi pinaperfect nyo eh or a product that you have launched like what? 6 months? 1 year ago? pero hindi nyo nilaunch kasi gusto nyo i-perfect 
So, may mga losses. No? So, ang gusto nating ipakita dito na culture or embody na culture is the culture of continuous improvement over delayed perfection. So, yun po yung ating prototype phase. So, yung ating fifth and last phase is what we call the validate. Now, we're testing solutions with actual customers. So, ang ginagawa po sa design sprint, naging invite at least ng certain number of um, testers, no actual testers. No based dun sa kunwari, if kung if market segment ka, if you're developing a new product or, or service, so dapat nagre-represent doon. Sa kagaya ng madaming testing na alam natin, so may number of samples required. Sa tingin niyo, ilang may t-shirt pa po ba tayo? Ilang ilang ano, ilang uminit nga no, ang dami yung energy yung binigay, pinapawisan ako. <laughs> Ilang ilang number of uh, actual user test actual user or tester ang kailangan natin pag sisibilin testing. So we're trying to figure out if functional ba, usable ba yung 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 whatever innovation na ginawa niyo, innovative solution. Mga ilang kaya? Any educated guess? Yung tama po mananalo ulit ng shirt. May may hula dito, to daw po. Five, tama si Ma'am, si Ma'am Kat. Mark, ch oh, ch oh, ay, yung mic nag-ano. Mas <laughs> na lang po kay Ma'am Kat na. So, five. Five people. Thank you, Ma'am Kat, for participating. So, we have five five lang na people. So, sabi kasi ng NN group, no, yung authority in terms of usability testing, five people will do. Yun daw pong tatlo kasi, sila yung magbibigay ng normal na feedback. No, yung, yung nandito, extreme na sobrang pangit, yung, yung isa naman, extreme na sobrang ganda. So, ibig sabihin, yung five people will do. No, hindi ko sinasabing kapag nag-evaluate kayo ng mga products nyo sa, sa workplace, ay yun yung susundin natin. Ha? So, this is very specific for this application. Okay? No, ano bang ginagawa using, during usability testing? Yan. So, usability testing, kung napansin nyo po kanina, walang masyadong explanation. Bibigyan lang siya ng task. And then, yung, yung user, yung actual user or tester, sila yung bahalang mag, mag ano, dun sa dun sa proseso. No, sila yung mahalang mag-walk through doon sa sarili nila doon sa proseso di ba? pag maganda yung process kasi natin di ba? kahit hindi mo siya bigyan ng o oh, ito yung parang hindi mo siya manduhan or bigyan ng detailed instruction but just following yung work instruction natin dapat magagawa niya yun without any error yun yung magandang design ng process so similarly, yun din yung gusto mong makita now if, if you see yung mga users or testers mo is having difficulty on navigating dun sa solution mo, ibig sabihin, hindi pa yun yung optimal. Kasi they're having difficulty pa. And, di ba, sabi natin, we're trying to eliminate the pain points. Yan. Okay. So, actually, that's the five phases. So, review lang tayo before I go to the actual examples. So, meron tayong first, understand. Second, sino mga kapagbigay ng lima? Nang walang kodigo. Okay. Sige, sir. Okay, very good. So, sabi niya, understand, sketch, decide, prototype, and validate. Pabigyan na lang po si sir ng... Nawala na yung mabibigyan ng t-shirt. Naubos na daw kasi. And thank you, sir. So, yun yung limang phases. Ay, house and that. Naku po. Wait. Ang hirap nun, sir. <laughs> Sige. Yan. Familiar ba kayo sa Pokemon Go? This is an actual thing na ginawa ng isa kong kakilala no, sa, sa organization nila. No, si, kapag laro kayo nun, yung iba hanggang kayo ilalaro pa rin. No? So Pokemon Go, diba, ang, ang objective is you you go to a particular place to no, find yung mga Pokemon sa nuhulihin mo sila virtually. Now, in this particular company, nung, nung shinare to sa akin ng, ng isang kaibigan to, Ang problem nila is that ang how might win nila is how they can increase no yung yung uh, employee participation sa CI nila or continuous improvement programs. Kasi parang sobrang hirap para sa mga tao yung yung activity no yung buong proseso. So what they did kasi kata na ng Pokemon instead of maghanap sila ng Pokemon sa planta kasi syempre hindi naman pwede yun. What they did is ginamit nila yung same concept, naghanap sila ngayon ng improvement. So what they do is they have, they develop an app 
And then kapag naglalakad ka, kunwari, dala mo yung phone mo, kung pwede po yung phone. Mga mamaya po sabihin niyo sa akin, magdala ng phone, yung mga tao nagdala ng phone. So depende po yun sa company policy. So naglalakad sila, may nakita silang, let's say, uh, an opportunity for improvement, pinipicture lang nila, and then dun sa app na mangyayari yung pag-submit ng proposal. So parang that particular thing that they did, na deploy nila, that increased their employee engagement in terms of participating sa continuous improvement programs. So, dun sa mga dati kong organizations, ganun din. Now, we ask people, ano ba yung gusto nyo na makuha at the end of the year, panwari? So, may mga lumabas na... Kasi kailangan alam natin kung ano yung gusto nila. Pag nag-design tayo ng program, ang mali kasi sa atin, sa ibang pagkakataon, ang nangyayari, tayo yung nag-design kung ano yung gusto nila. Which is dapat hindi. So, we try to ask them, paano ba? Ano bang gusto nyo? So, some of them, gusto daw ng mga... Parang may point system, tapos at the end of the year, yung points will be converted into items. Okay, so we followed it. And then it, it helps us na mag-increase din yung ating, yung aming ano, employee engagement. No? Kasi it's a measure for us, for our organization. No, actually, this particular approach, pwede nyo po siyang gamitin. No? Baka kasi isipin nyo in developing new products or service. No, when you're... Lahat kayo siguro dito naka-experience kayo or majority of the people here in the room naka-experience magawa ng work I. Ng work instruction. The one standard operating procedures. Pero most of the time, sa mga nakakakwentuhan ko, baka naman po wala dito. Uh, Nagdi-design sila para, para kung ano yung maganda na nakadocument. Now, kapag ginawa na ng actual na gagamit ng process, hindi na magkaintindihan. So that's one very basic application of design sprint or design thinking. No, Kaya di ba parang, okay, gawa ka ng bago, di ba? And then, tingnan mo paano ba nila ginagawa, get their feedbacks, baka naman maganda lang yan in paper, pero not doable in actual. Tapos, you will, at the end of the day, sisisihin yung tao na, ah, bakit hindi mo, hindi mo nagawa to, may error ka. Nag Pag nagawa ka ng explanation, because of man, forget to, blah, blah, blah. Di ba? So, parang, nagiging uh, touch base nung ating mali or pangit na process design yung mga taong gumagawa dun sa process. So yun lang, that that this particular um, approach, the design thinking, design design sprint approach can be integrated on the things that we do even sa mga manufacturing na scenarios. So I just want to leave you uh, with uh, a quotation na nasa book ko po. If you want to be innovative, you must be creative first. No? Meron meron mga tao na dalawa po kasi yun. Yung creative is you're able to figure out Different solutions, many solutions on problems that you identify. Pero hindi mo naman napapangyari. So creative ka lang, hindi ka innovative. So if you want to be innovative, kailangan creative ka. Both yon, hindi pwedeng pipili ka na. So I guess that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening and good morning again. I'm now open to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Felix Veloya. The floor is now open for questions. Yung kung may mga tanong, tumapit lang po, or raise your right hand. Itong na sila. Ando po oras yung merienda. Yun po yung <laughs> Wala daw merienda. Yes, sir, Ray. Sir, Ray, madali lang po, ah. <laughs> Ay, mali lang po yung ang tatong dyan. Ano ibig sabihin ng mga acronyms? Uh, yung PIE po is Professional Industrial Engineer. Yung AAE po ay Associate as an Engineer. Yung MBB po ay Master Black Belt, kagaya ng susunod na speaker. Yun pong ano, yung CSM is it's the Certified Sprint Master para sa Design Sprint. Tapos yung DROM is Dr. Femanities po. Last and second question. Yes, Mayroon ka namang libro sa Tagalog? Ah, uh, wala pa po. Pero pwede naman po. Pwede ni Project? Pwede po. Para malaman ng maraming tao. Kasi sa'yo hmm. puro nag-i-English lang. Ay, hindi po. Ay, sa bagay, hindi rin po ako magaling sa English. Pwede po yun, Tagalog. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay. May we request Mr. Veroya to remain on stage? So, are the couple of